road ahead is uncertain, but the end is clear. We are better defended. Against whom? Whomever may dare to challenge us. The threat of war looms. Gods have yet to make a man who lacks the patience for absolute power, Your Grace. Did you guys take any props home from set? Yeah, I had, I had, I half inched my sword. But don't tell anyone. I, I nicked one thing. Well, actually, I was given it, so I didn't nick it. I've been telling the porky there, like it's a funny story, but I, I did take it home. Yeah. But they knew I'd t taken it. I was giving me sword. Yeah. I got nicked a couple of I nicked a couple of things, but they knew they'd gone and they went, oh, On the pinch. What have you done with them? And I went, oh. But they I got something at the end, yeah. But not my knife. I want my knife. I still want my knife. Give him the knife. For God's sake, give him the knife. Give me the knife. Oh no, what we would have a lawsuit on our hands. Oh definitely. We want some other actors with gifted. Gifted thing? We we did not we we no. did nothing. We're not that no. No. I wish though. She just stole something. Don't say that. Okay. I wish I had now. I didn't really know that was an option. The, the stealing. St I didn't know stealing was an option. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would have taken like a chalice, um, or we have these these marbles in the small council chamber, which we put on like a donut to signif to signify that you know, we're on record here. Yeah. And I had a really nice one, it was really weighty, and it's, I would have taken that, because it's fun to just like, you know, whip them at each other and play like big marbles. Do you have, do any like rituals before you go into set, like listening to music to try and get yourself into the zone? I have an Alison playlist. I've, yeah. I've spoken before about my journaling. I think music is also a really good way of like getting into a character's headspace. Um, so I have an Alison playlist. I don't, I don't really use it Unless I was doing like a really grounded emotional scene. Yeah, but. what do I do? What do you do? Just kind of dance around. We do, we do, we do dance. Like dancing. Yeah. Just dancing. getting, just getting, just like, just letting go of everything that's going yeah. on in your personal life. Deep breathing. Really. Deep breathing. Yeah. I'm just laughing, really. Just laughing. Like, it's so, laughing. our job is so silly. It is. It's ridiculous. We make faces. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> that's literally it. Straight up. Honestly, well, I think the sort of um, uh, hair and makeup is part of that ritual for me. Um, because it sort of functions like a kind of airlock um, between you and this character you're gonna play for the rest of the day. Um, and it, like the wig in particular for me is so transformative as an object. Uh, as soon as you leave the makeup trailer, you are met differently, you're read differently, mm -hmm. you're treated differently and you behave differently. Um, so I'd say that's my ritual. Everyone says Targaryens are closer to gods than to men. But they say that because of our dragons. Without them, we're just like everyone else. What we really tried to do was create a world where dragons existed. At this point in the history, there have never been as many dragons in the world since the time of Old Valyria when there were a thousand dragons alive. That's quite a lot of dragons, but, you know, dragons are born, dragons die, dragons hatch. George really wanted the dragons to be colourful. I thought it was great, the, the idea that dragons are reptiles, and if you look at reptiles, they traditionally have very, very colourful coats. In the original series, dragons had lived at that point for 150 years, and when they're born, it's this miracle. Blood of my blood. Whereas in our world, not everybody has seen a dragon, but they are around. And they certainly, if you live in King's Landing, you've seen many of them fly overhead. The core of any Targaryen is a dragon. They're extremely powerful, and without them, we would not be the house that we are. They're treated with fear and reverence and awe, but they're also used as threats. There's a kind of detente that exists when a force has such an overwhelmingly dominating power like dragons. They're weapons of mass destruction. The reason that the Targaryens are considered as being closer to gods is because of their dragons. You got the dragons. Are you going to use the dragons? Are you going to burn entire cities and armies or try to? Dragons! That's a big step for any king or lord or, or, or claimant to try to take. We all 
also want to have the dragons be their own characters. The first dragon you meet is Cyrax, which is Rhaenyra's dragon, who at this point is a young adult. Cyrax was hatched to Rhaenyra when she was a child. I think the dragons that are born to their riders have a shared deeper bond than any of the other dragons. We kind of approached her like a bird of prey. So she's an eagle, she's built for speed, she's very proud and honorable. Caraxes, the bloodworm, Damon's dragon is quite another thing. Vicious, some would say, short-tempered. Yeah, maybe the dragon and the rider have a little in common there. Save me! Oh! Caraxes has burned a lot of people and seen a lot of battles and has earned that name of the bloodworm. Another major dragon, I think, that you would have to say is, of course, Vagar. Vagar is the oldest, largest dragon in the world, certainly the largest dragon you've ever seen on Game of Thrones. Queen Alicent's second son, Amond, claims Vagar, an act that actually inflames the dislike between the two branches of the family even more. Vagar is kind of old and falling apart a bit. The way we've approached dragons in this story is to say that dragons never stop growing, they just essentially grow until they die. And part of their death cycle is getting too large, too big for the world. And Vagar is so large that she doesn't really fit anywhere anymore. We, in, in our story, she doesn't even fit in the dragon pit anymore because she's grown so large. And that's created a bit of a loner personality to her. And she's very grumpy, she sleeps a lot. You know, she's like an old cat. <laughs> What we did a lot of work on was creating dragon infrastructure. The dragon pit was meant to be a, basically a stable for dragons, but dragons being big, it's an enormous structure. They're dragon keepers to look after and tend to the dragons. They have their whole own culture and mythos to them. There's dragon saddlery, so saddles are built to, to hold the dragons. Dragon eggs are the gateway to power. New offspring, the Targaryen lion, receive a dragon egg in the court. Hopefully that hatches and then they will be sort of joined for the rest of their life. I think it's quite interesting the way that the dragon eggs are described as only being partially successful in hatching. There's half of them don't ever actually hatch. You've come for the egg. Here it is. The story of House of the Dragon is a character-driven story with a lot of dragons. Everybody knew that if you messed with the Targaryens, you would get the dragon. So nobody dared to overthrow them. And at this time, the only thing that could tear down the House of the Dragon was itself. Fire is such strange power. Everything that House Targaryen possesses is owed to it. Yet it has cost us both what we love. Dracarys! 